So what is a mutable environment? This is a visualization that is found in the book, um, section 3.2. By the way, in the, in the slides, I give you a link for an interactive version of uh, section 3.2. And in section 3.2, I'm basically focusing on what are environments and how they're represented. Um, not necessarily, in, you will not get a lot of information on how to actually implement, because I'm, I'm doing it uh, slightly differently than in the book. So let's look at this visualization, and this is trying to give you, um, this is the textual version, and this is the graphical version, and try, they're trying to represent the same um, information. So what is on the left-hand side? Uh, the whole thing is the heap. So in this heap, we have uh, three handles. So we have uh, handle one, handle zero here at the root, and handle two. Um, and they three environments that are accessible via three possibly different portions of your code. Um, so what do the each environment represent? So we saw in uh, Lambda E, an environment is simply a hash table, but as your code or the, um, as we've seen for the semantics of how record works, uh, just having a simple um, immutable hash table is not enough. We need something else. So now we're trying to represent this notion of mutable environments where we can update uh, sub portions of um, the environment and propagate those changes forward. So let us see, in this case we have three environments and each environment is uniquely identified by a reference or a handle. I'm calling it a handle here, but you can think of it as a like a reference. As you might imagine in Java you have, for instance in Java or in Python, you have uh, a reference which is just a pointer to something in memory. Um, this is what we're doing here, where the something in memory here are these hash tables um, that have uh, variables and values, but also connections to other, uh, reference to other environments themselves. So, kind of, this is basically the memory layout, okay, of a record program. So what you see here is uh, in environment uh, reference by handle one, I have uh, some variables that are accessible and how do I know which variables there are? Well, I know that uh, this handle has a variable x to be 7 and z to be 6 but I can also access the parent environment and I can access y to be 5. But notice that um, because I'm defining x to be 7 on this environment, I'm overriding or shadowing the value of three in the parent environment, right? So the parent environment only has access to variables x and y, but uh, environment handle two, pointed by handle two, has access to variables y is two, m is one, and x is three, right? So that's more or less how you could see it. Um, and let's look at it uh, textually. So let's say that my memory, my whole memory, has three environments, one, two, three. So this is key, and this is value, and this is key, and this is value, this is key, and this is value. So what are the values? The values we call frames, so each of these boxes represents each of these um, frames. And you might see that there is sometimes a reference to a parent, and it's always only one, so it only goes upwards to the parent and this is acyclic. So this parent, uh, in this case, is this frame. So this frame has a reference to the parent, which is a E0, and this environment, uh, E2, which is this one, has a, also a reference to the same parent. Right? But you could also have another one that points to this one. They're not flat, they're hierarchical. Hierarchical. Okay, so what else? Then what we see here is that E0, you can see X to be 3, Y to be 5, right? And then in E1, where is E1? E1, E1, E1 is here. E1 has access to Z to be 6, X is bound to 7, and Y, which is accessible via this link, 
is uh, visible to be 5. And E2, you have access to X to be 3 via the parent environment, and M to 1 and Y to 2. So to recap, each of these boxes is a frame. It's called a frame. These arrows are references, um, and references are represented here with these names, E0, E1, um, which is just an alias for handle 0, handle 1, and handle 2. Uh, and this is actually how the code will uh, show, how the test cases will render your environment. Um, yeah, and inside each frame, basically, you're going to have a hash table and possibly a reference. Right? So in this case, the reference points to nothing. But in this case, the, the reference points to this. So in our next, um, in the implementation that I'm going to give, we're just going to try to implement each of these boxes. That's what we're going to try to do. Um, what else? Right, so then if you want to actually know what are the, the values of each frame, you need to navigate the whole heap so that you can, you know, this variable is accessible here, but you might have a variable that is three steps away. Um, so in this case, x is just one step, but you could, this uh, environment could be connected to another environment and so on. And all variables are accessible to the outer, to the, um, the leaves and to the, every node, right? Every node has access to its ancestors. Um, so that's more or less, that's, bas that's basically how variable lookup works. Um, yeah, and the environment, we, re we consider an environment uh, basically the current frame plus all the, ancestor and all the ancestors. Uh, that's what a, a frame is, is the sequence of from, from base environment, so any environment that you want, any node in this graph, up until the root, uh, that's going to be your environment. Okay, so as a quiz, now try to list, uh, look at a uh, handle, why is it? should be handle two, not handle one. The thing in purple, list all uh, variables that are visible in this environment. So this whole thing, the one that is pointed by handle two. You can do handle one as well. So maybe try to list them all and then go back a few slides to see the answer, okay? <clears throat> 